Coral reefs around the world are considered to be an ecosystem at risk. Coral reefs are very important. They are a habitat for a quarter of the world's marine species. They are also very important for people as they provide food, jobs, recreation opportunities and they protect coastlines from storm damage and erosion. According to the World Wildlife Fund, Australia's World Heritage listed Great Barrier Reef has lost half its coral cover in the last 30 years. Both natural stresses and human modifications have contributed to threatening the reef. Rising ocean temperatures, pollution and coastal development are included in some of the threats facing the reef. In this video we will look at the role human activities have played in threatening the Great Barrier Reef. As the population of North Queensland has grown, activities associated with coastal development has resulted in an increase in pollution which in turn impacts on the reef. Coral reefs thrive best in clear waters and can't survive in muddy polluted waters. One such activity is dredging. This is when sediment is removed from the seafloor to make deeper channels so large chips can reach a port. The process of dredging causes fine sediments to be thrown up into the water and can be dispersed by currents over 100 kilometres, ruining water quality and smothering seagrass beds and coral. The spoil from capital dredging was previously dumped out at sea, but in 2015 the federal government banned this practice. Despite this, the dumping of sediment by maintenance dredging is still allowed. About 1 million cubic metres a year is deposited in the World Heritage Area, impacting the breeding and feeding grounds of turtles, dugons and other sensitive species. Some sources estimate that over 10,000 ships carrying coal, agricultural goods, metals and minerals and other cargo are making the journey through the reef to the ports of North Queensland each year, with these numbers projected to keep increasing. With this increase in shipping traffic, there have been proposed expansions of major ports in Cairns, Townsville, Abbott Point, Hay Point and Gladstone. Further, having more ships passing through these waters off the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park increases the chances of an accident that could result in the spilling of oil and other contaminants into the sea. There has already been a precedent for this when in 2010 the Shengning Wan, a Chinese ship carrying coal, got stranded on Douglas Shoal off the coast of central Queensland. The ship destroyed 0.4 square kilometres of reef, spilled oil, and over a ton of toxic paint flakes were shed into the sea. Pollution caused by other sources is also a threat to the coral and marine life of the reef, including pollution from agricultural runoff, waste disposal and litter. In North Queensland, the main form of agriculture on the mainland is sugarcane farming. As sugarcane plantations have increased, there has been a corresponding increase in sediment fertiliser and pesticide runoff entering waterways that leads to the sea. Many of the fertilisers used contain nitrogen and phosphorus. The spread of banana plantations has also led to increased use of fertilisers. Only a third of the fertiliser is sucked up by the crops. Some of this is evaporated, some infiltrates the ground to enter the groundwater and the remainder runs off into waterways. Sugarcane plantations have canals that were built to quickly drain the water away to prevent the roots from rotting. Unfortunately, these canals also quickly carry the runoff away from the farm to the main river systems, which eventually leads to the sea. Nitrogen from these fertilisers is also known to lead to algal blooms. This in turn provides food for juvenile crowniform starfish, which are a major threat to corals. Algal blooms also cause a reduction in the amount of light that can reach the seafloor, which is vital for seagrasses to grow properly. Tourist activities such as snorkeling, diving and boating can have harmful effects on the reef when not conducted in a sustainable way. The Great Barrier Reef attracts millions of tourists each year. 
Associated tourism development of accommodation, cafes, bars and resorts near the shoreline increases the risk of litter and sewage finding its way into the sea. Further, increased boat traffic has potential to result in oil spills and coral damage by boat propellers. People snorkeling in the reef have potential to break corals. Both recreational and commercial fishing has had a major impact on the reef. In the past century, overfishing has caused the stock sizes of some species to plummet. The overfishing of particular species can harm the food chain in and around the Great Barrier Reef, which can have a negative knock-on effect for the surrounding ecosystems. 75% of fin fish caught in the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park are by recreational fishermen. Commercial fishing targets species such as crayfish, finfish, reef fish, barramundi and tuna. The use of nets can result in bycatch that includes protected species including sharks, dugongs and turtles. The biggest threat to the Great Barrier Reef is climate change. Rising sea temperatures and ocean acidification caused by increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are threatening the coral reefs and the marine species that depend on them. Increased ocean temperatures have led to mass bleaching events whereby the corals stressed by the warmer waters expel the symbiotic algae that gives them their stunning colours. For example, there was a mass bleaching event in 2016 that saw coral in the northern third of the Great Barrier Reef severely bleached. The following year in 2017, there was another bleaching event that impacted the middle section of the reef. Another potential threat to the reef is the introduction of invasive species into Australian waters. Invasive species can outcompete native species, damaging the balance of the ecosystem. Most marine invasive species have been introduced to Australian waters unintentionally through shipping activities and mariculture. For example, some species such as the Caribbean tube worm have been introduced into Cairns Harbour after initially attaching themselves to the hulls of ships. When organisms attach themselves to boats and other underwater objects, it is called marine fouling. Another source of invasive species is ballast water. This is water taken on board by vessels to maintain stability. Ballast water can carry aquatic microbes, plants and animals. It is estimated that about 7,000 marine species are spread across the world's oceans in the ballast of vessels and which is then discharged into the waters of ports around the world. It is estimated that over 150 million tonnes of ballast water is discharged into Australia's largest ports each year. Can the reef be saved? In 1975, the Australian Government passed the Great Barrier Reef Marine Act. The aim was the long-term protection and conservation of the environment, biodiversity and heritage values of the Great Barrier Reef region. The Australian Government has invested significantly in research to understand the reef's ecological processes and the threats it faces. In 2015 they released the Reef 2050 Plan, which is a comprehensive plan to manage and protect the Great Barrier Reef. Additionally, the government has introduced regulations and laws to reduce pollution, control fishing activities and minimise the impact of coastal development on the reef. However, the biggest threat to the reef is global warming, which has led to increasing temperatures of the oceans. Australia can't solve this problem alone, as this issue requires the cooperation of governments around the world. On an individual level, People can help by doing things such as reducing their use of plastic, supporting organisations that work to protect the reef, and by educating others about the importance of preserving the Great Barrier Reef and its marine life.